Welcome to part two of our exploration of internal and external interrupts. We're going to look at a couple of practical examples on how we can use each. So the first thing is let's take a look at all of the different sort of interrupts we can create on an Arduino Uno. So the first few here are um, external interrupts. And we are in fact going to take a look at these PC int. This is your, uh, this is your pin change interrupt. Right? If we have uh, 0, 1, and 2, these correspond to ports B, C, and D. Okay. And then we have a whole series of uh, timer counter interrupts. These are internal uh, generated interrupts, different forms that we're going to use these. So we're, we're going to look at a, sort of a basic form for one of these. There are other ones in here, as you can see. Um, we have the analog digital um, conversion complete. There are some for this, the serial interface, other, other devices. So there's quite a few of them, okay? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're gonna look at, um, as I said, this pin change interrupt and how we could create a, a simple odometer for a bicycle. Now, all we're gonna do is just record each revolution of the wheel. And by counting those up and knowing what the diameter of the wheel is, we can turn that into a distance. So first thing is we need a sensor, right? So here's a little photograph of uh, a Hall Effect based sensor that sits on the uh, fork of my road bike. There's a little magnet right here. And here's the, here's the sensor. Every time this magnet goes by, it creates a little voltage spike. And um, I put this bike on a uh, repair stand hooked an oscilloscope up to it, the things I do for my students. Spun the wheel, and this is what we got, all right? Because that's a lot easier than trying to hook up an oscilloscope while you're riding the bike. That's a little cumbersome. So anyway, on the repair stand, here's what we got. We got these little spikes coming out. Now, um, the potential on this perhaps is not big enough. You can see this is 200 millivolts per division. So we're not getting a five volt spike out of here that we could generally, you know, run right into, um, you know, one of the uh, pins on the Arduino. So we're going to need some interface circuitry. We'll have to hook up maybe a little comparator to this to square this up and get the amplitude that we need. But ultimately, we're just going to get this little spike, right? We can even set it up to be negative going as well as positive going, you know, whatever works for us. That's the hardware end of it, okay? Now, the software end of it, what we're going to need first of all, is a global variable to record the number of revolutions that we have. Now, I've chosen a long here. If I were to choose an unsigned short, right, that would top out at about 65,000 revolutions. And for a typical road bike, you'd have around two meters for the diameter, excuse me, for the uh, circumference. Um, end result, you could get about 130 kilometers out of this, which wouldn't be enough if you were going to do a century ride, but, um, you know, maybe for a typical tool around town, but just to be on the safe side, I put a long in there. Okay. Now we are going to use pin 11 on the Uno, which relates back to uh, port B bit three. So the mask for that is hex eight. All right. So our setup consists first of all, setting up the data direction register. Uh, so that we have input mode on that bit, bit th uh, three of port B, right? So there's um, anding with the complement of the sensor mask to, to make sure that's clear. Then we have to enable the interrupts for uh, port B, in other words, bank zero. Now, if we come down here, I've got the um, registers out here, right? So we have the interrupt control register over here, um, and these these correspond to the the three banks, right? So we're going to have to set this bit down here. So that's what this guy's doing right here. Set that bit. So that entire bank is now available. And I also have to grab the bits within that bank, right? So here's the uh, mask, right? The, the pin change mask. That's this guy down here. And we're interested in bit three. Okay. So that's PC and three which is this bit right here, right? Bit zero, one, two, three, there we go. So I just use a couple of these little bit set macros to set those two things. So that's now all set up, 
Okay, every time we get a high to low or a low to high transition on that pin, our interrupt is going to be called. So here is the interrupt, right? The interrupt service routine, the ISR, PC int zero. Now, this is pin change. So as I said, it's high to low or low to high. I've set this up to look at just the um, uh, going low, right? The, the, uh, the high to low transition. So basically what we do is we just check pin B, right? That entire register and it with the sensor mask because I don't want to see the other seven bits. I just want to see that one and see if it's low, right? If not, do this. If you want to do it the other way around, just get rid of the exclamation point, get rid of the not, okay? So all that does is it just says, well, you know, we got a signal, so boink, just increment this global uh, grevs variable, all right? So every time it goes around, we call the interrupt, we, in we wind up incrementing that, okay? If I don't do this um, check in here, if I just say grevs plus plus, we're going to wind up double counting, right? Because we'll have a high to low and then a low to high transition on those, on those um, pulses, right? So I'll, I'll wind up double counting those. So we just do that. Now, the loop code, right? I'm, sh I'm not showing anything in here. Um, this would basically be the uh, uh, manipulation of that global to turn it into, in other words, um, you know, doing your, your little uh, number of revolutions times the, times the uh, circumference, circumference, excuse me, ca uh, computation to get the actual distance. And then, you know, maybe you have some kind of display value out here. Um, you know, some kind of um, LCD or, you know, whatever the heck it is, and you need to drive um, that, right? You need to, to drive that display. So I'm leaving that all out here because all I'm interested in is just how the interrupt itself works. So remember one of the things is we want interrupts to be short, sort of get in, do your thing, get out, right? So that's all this does, right? Just checks this thing to make sure it's in the, going in the right direction. And if it is, boom, increment that value, get out, you're done. Okay. All right. So that's how one way that we could use um, an, uh, an external interrupt. So this is just basically counting. Okay. And this is applicable to a lot of different things. You're just counting stuff. All right. So something a little bit different. I would like to create a metronome, All right? Simple, you know, musical metronome. So I might have a song that's uh, 120 beats per minute. Okay. What does that work out to, you know, on a, on a second pace as well, if it's, you know, 60 seconds to a minute, 120 beats per minute. So basically a beat comes by, in other words, a, um, a quarter note, typically, if you had four, four time, um, would come by every half second, right? So you just, you're clicking off half seconds here, boom, boom, boom. So we would maybe like some kind of visual, maybe a flashing LED, um, some kind of sonic thing, you know, a little clicking sound that's coming by so I can you know, practice my instrument or whatever, um, get into the, into that, uh, that timing groove. All right. So there's different ways of doing this. And you might think in terms of just setting up the timer to give you an interrupt, you know, in this case, every 500 milliseconds. One of the problems with that is you might not have, um, enough of a, uh, a prescaler, a divide down on the clock to actually get something that long in time. So you have to come about this in a different way. Um, you also might not have the sort of resolution that you want, because after all, you're not going to just set it up for 120. You know, you want to do 121, 119, and so forth. So you have to have some sort of variability there. So what I'm going to do is just check, um, check this out with a, uh, a simple normal mode of the timer so that on overflow, we're going to use an 8-bit timer. It's going to go from 0 to 255, right? So 256 counts. When it hits 255, it overflows, goes back to zero. On that overflow, it's going to trigger the interrupt, okay? So um, OVF, as we would say, all right? So that's an overflow trigger. Now, what I'm going to do is set this up to be much, much faster than the basic beats per minute count. I'm going to set this up so that it gives us sort of ticks, if you will, at millisecond rates. In other words, let's... You could think of this as like roughly a millisecond clock that's ticking away in the background. So I'm going to need 500 milliseconds 
to get this 120 beats per minute. All right. I'm going to keep track of the number of ticks that I have with this global, this G ticks. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to compare that to what I want. In this case, the ticks per beat. In this case, 500 of them, 500 milliseconds for my 120. Okay. All righty. So our uh, registers of interest down here, we have uh, the mask, which we're going to have to do an interrupt enable on that down here. And then we have the two control registers to set up the various modes. And these three bits down here, you might recall, these are the uh, prescaler for the, for the um, uh, timers. Okay. All right. So let's roll back here. So the first thing we do, if I clear all the bits in, uh, in the control register 2A, this is going to give us normal mode. The external pin is disconnected. All right. Boom. We're all set for that. Over here for uh, the uh, control register number 2B, this we set to hex 4. This will give us a 64 uh, prescale. So and that's these, these three bits down here. All right. So it's going to be a, a 100. Now with a 64 prescale, what's going to happen is the Uno runs at a 16 megahertz clock. So that 16 megahertz is going to get divided down by 64. And that's going to represent one count. So you take 16 meg, you divide that by 64, and then there's going to be 256 counts, 0 to 255, before the overflow. So you take that and you divide that result by 256, and it works out to be just a smidge over a millisecond. It's actually like 1.024 milliseconds. Um, so in fact, this is just a little bit slow. If you wanted to adjust, this would really need to be closer to about 488 if you wanted to get exactly 120 beats per, uh, per mi um, uh, minute. Um, but you can see what's basically going on here. Let's just sort of round that off. Uh, instead of using a, a, a bit set like I did in the, in the preceding example, I just did a simple shift, bit shift over here um, to enable that interrupt. Okay, so this, this is our interrupt enable for um, uh, item number two, okay? So every time we get the overflow, bump, we're going to call the ISR. Here's the ISR, All right? Timer two overflow vector. So what do I do? Well, I just increment the number of ticks. And then if the ticks are at least as big as ticks per beat, I reset this, and I don't have it in here, but I would, you know, uh, perhaps write a bit to a port that would then trigger some other circuitry that would, you know, create the beep sound that I want or light up an LED or, you know, whatever the heck it is, that would be my little triggering circuit. It is possible to actually generate uh, the sounds and so forth uh, you know, directly from the, from the Uno, but just to keep this code simple, I just put a little, a little uh, comment in here. That's what you need to do. Okay. So when we hit it, reset it, trigger the external stuff for the beep in the, in the uh, light, and that's it. You're done. Okay. Otherwise, we're just going to keep counting them up, counting them up, counting them up. Inside the uh, loop, again, there's nothing that we really need to do as far as the timing is concerned. We would just have some code in here that would allow the user maybe some up-down buttons to um, alter what the, the beats per minute are. Okay. Ooh, that's, that shouldn't be beats per measure. That's wrong. All right. That's beats. If you had 120 beats per measure, man, you're doing something crazy. Okay. Um, but nonetheless, beats per minute. All right. 